All right. I'm kind of bummed out though, because this is my last week of Halloween jokes. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit you with uh, the worst one. And I'm, and I'm even saying that this one's bad. So you're ready. What do ghosts like to drink at parties? Booze. Booze. <laughs> See, Kirk got that. it. All right. Oh, I, I, I was, I was going to I was going to say Michelob Ultra. Actually, the correct answer is Red Devil Ale. <laughs> Red Bull. <laughs> there, there you go. go. Yeah. See, just ended on a total downer. That's all right. I'll think of some Thanksgiving That's jokes. Weird. All right, everybody. Good evening, y'all. Welcome to the Controller Throwers podcast. <laughs> y'all. Y'all. You know. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Just stop. What's, What's wrong with, with the y'all? y'all stuff? What do you mean stuff? This is the first time I ever said y'all. I know, but oh, I know why. Should I have just said please. party people? No, 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 no. Please, please just. Please. Wait, I know why? why you said it. Go ahead. Why did I say y'all? I know why. Just I go. don't know why. I just said it. No, just go. Just All go. Right. All right. We'll hear about it later. I'm right. staying out of this one. Yeah, I think I'm staying out of it, too. What up, y'all? Uh, welcome to the Controller Throwers podcast. This is podcast episode number 77 for Tuesday, October 30th, 2018, the day before the Halloween. Hello, everybody. I am Mike. With me, as always, is Mr. Kurt. Hello. And Mr. Brian. Howdy. Uh, Miss Sherry is ill today. So she is uh, taking the night off. So it's going to be old school controller throwers today. Uh, just like our business cards, because we haven't decided to update them yet to include Sherry. <laughs> that's because we, we still have 15,000 of them to keep. Yeah, so. yeah. We're not, we're, I'm, I'm not <laughs> spending 40 bucks on more cards until we get rid of, until we get rid of the 5,000 that we bought. So basically what we do is we just kind of draw Sherry's face in there. Yeah. <laughs> when they hand out her business cards, like a little stick figure. That's Sherry, okay? And if you She's would, got a little dress on. If you would like a controller thrower's business card, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to... <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, all right. Yeah, you know what? Let's just jump into the news. All right. Oh, shoot. I need to bring my notes Wait, up. I think I... No, I don't have the first story. Okay. Yeah, I do. So, <laughs> Sony has finally lifted the curtain... On all the games that will be available for the PlayStation Classic. The initial announcement a few months back only had five games listed. But now we know everything that's going to come with. So, here's the PlayStation Classic game list. Battle Arena. Uh, to she didn't. That's good. You got it. Okay. Thank you. Cool Borders 2. Destruction Derby. Final Fantasy 7. Grand Theft Auto, yes. Uh, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Uh, Mr. Driller, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, love that game. Raymond, love that game too. Resident Evil, Director's Cut, Revelations, Persona, Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, Wild Arms. Wow, that's a list. The PlayStation Classic will also launch on December 3rd, which is also the same date that the original PlayStation launched back Mm -hmm. in 1994. The mini console, 45% smaller than the original PlayStation, will retail for a whopping price of $99.99. That's, I'm waiting for Brian to jump in with, good lord, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I actually don't think that that's super horrible. But if you, if you want, if, if you want, good lord, that's a lot of money. How about I give you $2.75 and you just let me play it for an hour? <laughs> let me just rent it. <laughs> <laughs> classic, okay, so classic Chris Rock. Right? Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so out of... Out of the games, 
if you're going like, okay, vanilla, never played him, never seen him before, heard about him. Out of all these games listed, how many would you pick up not knowing that they already out for a console? See, see, I, I've never had an original PlayStation, so I've I've never played any of these games. But just by what I've heard of the games alone, I would probably play Fa- Final Fantasy VII, the original Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear Solid, um, obviously Resident Evil, and well, Twisted Metal, I've actually I've actually heard of it and I've actually played, so I would pl- I would play that one and probably Rainbow Six. So what is that five? Six, I think, yeah. Six. So that- okay, so six, or we'll just say six. So six, back in the day, they were probably like still thirty, forty dollar games back then, right? Yeah, fifty so, bucks. Yeah. Yeah, fifty bucks. So I mean, that's well worth the ninety nine dollars, obviously. If you consider what, well, if you consider what they were then, also if you consider what they're worth now, yeah, I think so because I think Resident Evil is probably goes for like twenty bucks. Final Fantasy probably goes for twenty five, thirty. Well, what um, about if you get them on like remastered editions, or I don't know if they have them for PlayStation Network or something along those lines. Well, I mean, you look at if you're looking at you spend a hundred dollars for for six games, that's a roughly seventeen dollars a game. Yeah. So then, does that then become worth it just to have the games, or to have the whole nostalgia mini consoles next to your other ones that you know you're going to collect or you already have? Mm-hmm. See, you're you're thinking too too deep into this. I'm thinking like, put yourself back when the console was originally released in 1994, knowing these knowing that these games are coming out. Would you buy this console for ninety nine bucks? You know what I mean? Like these, like say you you heard of these games, you wanted to play them. Is it worth the ninety nine dollars for you to spend? Let's let's just ask. I mean, yeah, do knowing this list, would you pick up the system if it, if it released tomorrow? If you're asking me, I don't know. Okay. Oh, like I, I, said, I, I I haven't. I've never played a PlayStation before. I mean, I, I, up to my since until my four okay so i i i mean the games obviously the, you know the names of the game just sound you know just by knowing the games and, and the starts of, of some of the franchise well maybe not the starts but you know just 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 knowing some of these games is to me is it worth it i don't know i'm i'm looking at it more of, along the lines of getting it to add to that mini console collection that i that i've started and that i will probably keep going when the classic 64 comes out or whatever the next nintendo is going to be so but i don't know but in, in that case I, I i don't think i'd be getting the sega one either so i don't know necessarily if, if i'm going to jump into these these consoles that i've never played before so to me it, it, it probably wouldn't be a i'm going to get it on the day it comes out like i did with the 64 or not the 64 the uh the super nintendo and then the the, the, the second time around for the nes classic Mm-hmm. This one might be, hey, I see it a little later on down the line, then maybe I might pick it up at that time. Yeah. But again, I'm not knocking at all because uh, just the names of some of these games just, just. I mean, if well, you're if you're a PlayStation, if you played it, you you obviously love these games, I'm sure. Right. Um. So, a couple things. Number one, if you're if you're looking to get a robust mini console collection, tomorrow you need to trot over to GameStop. Because GameStop has the, I think it's GameStop exclusive, um, the Commodore 64 Mini. Mm. Mm. Currently in stock for $79.99. In terms of the PlayStation, so Battle Arena Toshinden. um, I enjoyed that game. That was a... That was that, that that was a fighting game, kind of like Soul Calibur, but it was it was a launch game. So um, let's see, Cool Borders. Uh, Final Fantasy VII. I mean, if you never played it before, it's a phenomenal game. It's so good. The original GTA, the original top-down, old-school yes. GTA, yes. classic. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. incredible. Uh, Intelligent Cube is a good game. It's like a puzzle-type game. Uh, Jumping Flash, I never played. Metal Gear Solid. I mean, that's 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 another incredible game. That's a definite get. Mm-hmm. Um, Odd World, Abe's Odyssey. That's that's oh, a great. God. That's a great game. 
I haven't played Rayman, but this would be a good opportunity for me to jump into it. Of course, Resident Evil Director's Cut. Um, Super Puzzle Fighter. Siphon Filter's a great game. That's kind of yeah. like a spy... Or it's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like a Metal Gear Solid type game, almost. But Siphon Filter's been very popular. Uh, Tekken 3, you know, we can get Franken on that. He'd, jump, he'd be all over Tekken 3. All the Tekken, all the Tekken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you know, Twisted Metal, of course. The, I, although I would have, I would have liked it better. If Twisted Metal Two is on there because I think a lot of people think, myself included, Twisted Twisted Metal Two is a far superior game than the first Twisted Metal. But hey, that's just me. Um, there's, there's, so this, this full list has gotten some mixed reactions. Some of the reactions that I've heard, um, I don't know. Some people are saying that. Where's Crash Bandicoot? Where's Spyro the Dragon? Where's the other Resident Evils? And to that, I say, well, they just released remastered versions of all these games. So you're technically getting a better version of that. So what do you need it on that system for? I mean, I know some people like to play the originals and stuff, and that's totally cool. But um, I don't know. There's a lot of people that are like, I, you know, one of the games that I really wish was on there was Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Because, you know, that's one of my favorite PlayStation, original PlayStation games of all time. There's some other games that I liked. Spider being one of them. Pandemonium, another one. Um, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider, yeah. Like, so. Just put the original Tomb Raider in there or something. But, you know, with any announcement of any kind of mini console, you're going to get people that are salty about what games were not included. Um, well, let me ask you this, though. If you start adding all of these games, then does it start to become a little too much? Too, too, what, too many games? Oh, yeah. Too many well, games. You also got to take into consideration how much space each of these games take up. Right, right. So, because now we're jumping into the CD territory. Um, but somebody actually... So, so then, so then, do you think maybe some of these mini, mini consoles should turn into a downloadable ports where you can you can actually add some of these games? Like you, like you, you stick in a... You know, you you connect a hard drive, an external hard drive to it, and you can now have the option to download and play all these games. That, or or does that then take away from the PlayStation Network games? No. Or, or 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 does this give you a separate avenue to add a ton more games to that system, to to your mini console, and then have your other games to your your PlayStation Network? That would be. And, go ahead, Kurt. Instead of having like a hard drive, have an SD card. You can get a 128 gig SD card nowadays for like 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. So if they added a feature to where you could download now, now keep in mind when the original PlayStation came out, they were on a CD. They weren't on DVDs yet. So the maximum was 800 meg. If you had uh, 128 gig SSD. You know how many games you could fit on there? You could probably fit their whole entire library on there. Yep. And I think that would have, would have been an incredible idea was to offer some kind of an eShop. Yes. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, well, well that, that's why we're doing a podcast and not uh, the marketing directors for these systems. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. At the end of the day, <laughs> I'm unsure whether or not I'm going to buy it. I, I'm because a lot of these games I've either played or, but you know, it's like to Brian's point, you know, it would, sure would look nice next to my other mini consoles, and I'm going to get the Sega <laughs> Sega Genesis Mini when it comes out. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's 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 a tough decision. Um, There's it, so many games on here that I like though. But somebody did bring up like, a good point. So go ahead. Like Cool Borders, Destruction Derby, um, the Final Fantasy, the Grand Theft Auto, Metal, Metal Gear, um, Odds or Odd, uh, Odd World, yep. Abe's Odyssey. That that game to me, I loved that game. Call me odd or weird or whatever. I loved yeah. that game. That game was an awesome game to me. Uh, Rayman, uh, Resident that. Evil, Ridge Racer, like all these games, like even Siphon Filter, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. These were these were good games, you know, yeah. to me. So I mean, I I think for for a hundred bucks, I'd probably pick it up. Yeah, um, I did see a, a comment um, where somebody had pointed out that when the PlayStation first came out, 
3D graphics were just beginning. It was in its infancy. So if Mm -hmm. you think of it, the PlayStation is kind of like the Atari of polygon graphics, of 3D graphics. That's why a lot of these games don't hold up like they used to. Like a lot of Atari games don't hold up like they used to. And I and I saw that and I was like, you know what? I'm like, dang, this guy's got a point. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you'd, you'd have to be that that person that's chasing the nostalgia to to buy it, I guess, right? right. Yep. So I'm still undecided. I'll wait and see. Maybe I'll, I don't know. Maybe I'll get it for Christmas or something. Same here, Mike. But speaking of games that we are going to be buying, or most <laughs> of us are going to are going to be buying. <laughs> Uh, recently we have learned, like many other popular games, Fallout 76 will unfortunately feature microtransactions, oh. of course. However, though, Bethesda boss Pete Hines said not to worry. In an interview with GameSpot at, at PAX Australia, Hines advised that Bethesda will only be offering cosmetics to buy with real money, which will not affect your gameplay. Having the ability to purchase better weapons could throw off the multiplayer balance and give certain players the ability to pay to win, Heinz said. So so Fallout 76 microtransactions will come in the forms of of atoms, which you can buy with real money at an atom shop or unlocking through gameplay. Atoms are rewarded for completing certain tasks and objectives in the game. Heinz said if you don't want to spend money uh, at the atom shop for cosmetic stuff, you don't have to. Uh, we give you lots of atoms for playing the game. Folks that want to spend money on whatever the hell it is because they don't have enough atoms, they can do that, but they don't have to. Now, I'm now better playing again. I'm now betting better playing against other players because I spent money. It's not a play to win, and it's not loot crates. Additionally, Heinz gave some information post-release content on some post-release release content. Uh, all the content we've put so far into Fallout 76, all the DLC, all the post-launch stuff is going to be free. When they put out new content features or whatever, you're going to get that stuff for free. Yeah. Fallout 76 launches on November 14th for the PS1, Xbox, PS4, Xbox One, and the PC. <laughs> If it was for the PS1, then yeah, that'd be kind of rough. Could you imagine how many? <laughs> could you imagine how many discs that would be? P, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, you, PS1, you'd go PS1 take your mini. dog meat to the next town, load disc thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> P, P, PS1 mini, though, by the way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, that's good to hear. I mean, that's you know the microtransactions, eh, you know that's that's what they're doing. But at least it's not going to affect gameplay. And yes. you could, um, and, and it's not, it's not pay to win, which we hate. I thought this, I thought, I, th- I thought Bethesda was going pretty much away from this whole player versus player aspect of the game. They are. Well, so, they're, so, they're why, so why, why would, why would, if, if I want to spend $500 to be able to, to, to destroy anything with, with, with one, you know, with one shot, how does that affect other players in the game, though? But it doesn't. Think... You're only paying for like outfits and hats and stuff. Right. But, but what I'm what I'm saying though is that they're making a big deal about this this being you know they're they're totally against it, this this pay to win stuff. But if they're also against you know players coming up and you know just killing oh. other players for the sake of killing other players, then why make a big deal out of something that doesn't affect other players in in, in the same map. Ah, oh, I didn't program the game. What are you giving me a hard time about it for? <laughs> because you wrote the you wrote the notes. <laughs> no, I mean I mean I, I don't I mean personally I don't care. I, I, I've never really gotten into the whole pay to win thing, but I I just it just I'm I mean and I'm glad that Fallout seventy six is not, you know, going down that road. But it just seems like, like they're 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 using this to argue against something that they're already fighting against anyway. Hmm. But again, uh, again, they're 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 taking everything that people don't like about games and they are not doing it in this one. So that's I 
I love him for it. So GG. GG for that. GG. Is that is the GG button still lost? Oh yeah. Okay. It's, uh... <laughs> oh yeah, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's uh Yeah. It's in a pile over it's there so- somewhere. It's somewhere in Nebraska. <laughs> All right. Well, good. So I, you know, that's even more. I can't even see it in eyesight. To be honest with you, I don't even know where. (laughs) That's okay. Uh, But that's still more good news out of Fallout 76. You know, makes us uh, want it even more. Be more excited for it. So we still uh, we got another two weeks left. So awesome. I gotta buy another game in two weeks now. Yeah, you do. Oh, jeez. Better. I just bought a game. Better go mow some lawns. I know, right? Yeah, mow my own lawn first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so moving on. Uh, so Microsoft apparently has plans to expand their Game Pass subscription service from Xbox One to PC. This was learned during an earnings call when CEO Sadia Nadella mentioned they wanted to help increase the strength of the Xbox brand. There's not much information other than what was said during the call, but this does not come as a surprise uh, as Microsoft has been blurring the lines between Xbox and PC with its current Play Anywhere initiative. Uh, An Xbox One Game Pass currently costs $10 a month and gives you access to play over 100 games uh, on your Xbox One. Think of it kind of like a video game version of Netflix. So if Microsoft brought that concept to include PC games, questions may arise on if this would actually result in an extra fee. Um, so hmm. here's my thought on it. I love this idea, but at the same time, I don't like the idea. So what? I Wait, love it. You're saying PC Master Race is a good idea? I don't or, know. Or, or, or is, is, is this going to be PC console race now? Yeah. I, I, that's not, what I think. Not, so, because now, then, then what is, what is Xbox One or, or maybe even, you know, the Xbox Two? Right. Is it then now going to compete with? PlayStation 5, or is it going to be compete with PC, right. or is it trying to be both? Right. Yeah, and and, and that's the point. That's the point that I that I'm making is that I I as a non Xbox owner, this makes me happy. I would love to have access to all these Xbox One games for ten dollars a month to play on my PC. Um, however, for the xbox model they're kind of cannibalizing their own sales explain that it's like so like so for myself i you know play all my games play all the xbox games i need on the pc what do i need an xbox for so but you're still still buying i think i think the reason why they would right well, you know, you're just buying the you're, you're just buying, buying the, the ten dollars a month Game Pass. Yeah, I you're think right, you're I, right, you're right. I the disconnect is couch system or desk system. So you're saying, oh, what well, what would I want an Xbox for? What well, you would want it for a couch system, mm-hmm. where you could actually sit back, kick your legs up on the ottoman, and just you know have the controller resting on your fat belly and just be playing a game. Right, yeah. as you know, opposed I, I, to sitting like upright in a desk in a desk chair that's really sometimes not that comfortable unless you have one of those streaming chairs or whatever, you know. So I I think they're still gonna have the people that are gonna buy the consoles just because they don't want you know the person doesn't want to sit in front of a monitor or in front of a PC. Right. Hey, how comfortable are those chairs you guys are sitting on? Oh my God, this one sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, so and like, like to, to, to get to your point, isn't isn't your video game consoles just straight to your right? I just do this. I go e. Exactly. And there we go. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, you you can you can technically play either one right in the same spot, right? Yep. And yeah. I got a TV right in front of me too. So. <laughs> I got a TV or, here, or, my monitor's or, or, here, or, and my or, other TV Or could, there. couldn't couldn't you just just run a cord from your from your your um from from your computer straight to your TV and run and just play off your TV? I could. So yeah. Uh, but anyways, but like I said, I mean it's it's I I like the idea because I wanna I would love to play Forza Horizon. That game does look awesome. I would love to play um. 
what's a, what's another good one? Oh uh, man, now I just completely forgot the name of it. I don't know. It's I think made by the same people that made Alan Wake. I think um, Quantum something. I don't know. Um, so there's a lot of those Xbox games that I would love to play, but I don't have an Xbox. This would make me spend that money to get the uh, monthly pass so that I don't have to buy an Xbox. It'll free up an HDMI port on my TV. So I don't know. So we'll see. Hopefully this won't bite them. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll, it'll make them more successful because a successful Microsoft means more competition for Sony means better games and better systems. So, all right. And now all, that. It, yeah, all that stuff, all the good stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh and okay so for our last bit of news it's time for my favorite time of the month our npd top 10 games for september 2018 so and the reason why sherry's not here yes yeah that's why air quotes she's sick sick of doing npd yes so she she probably read the notes and said Woo, 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 woo. I'm out of just here. Just did a cramp scuttle out of the room. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, all right. So normally what we do is we spend probably a good 20 minutes. Um, agonizing 20 agonizing, minutes, by the way. Good agonizing 20 <laughs> minutes trying to figure out what's on the list. So um, we're just going to – we're just, and, and what place they're see, on. But we're just going to blast this, through this. 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 this is a bummer this, this, this week around because I actually I – actually, I mean, I, obviously, I'm pretty good at this game anyway, but I, I think yeah, I have win like every this month. whole entire list. Yeah. So, all you right. win well, every month, and we hate you for it, okay? So, just, you know. So, we'll just, <laughs> so let's just rock through this. Uh, Kurt, you want to go wait, first? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, are, are, we, are we actually guessing, or yeah. are we just... Yeah, yeah, just, okay. just just throw a guess out. We're not going to play, like, oh, what place is it in. If you want to guess what place it's in, that's fine, but um, we, don't need, we don't need to be as detailed. So what do you think's on the list, Kurt? Uh, uh, Breath of the Wild. I don't know. Okay, no. Okay. Spider Man's number one. Spider Man is number one. All right, back to you, Kurt. Oh, let me let, let me give you guys a hint. Let me give you let me give you guys a hint. I don't need hints. I will. Kurt does. Uh, I do. I I really do. Okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. Hold. Hold on. Hold I'm on. a noob. Then, then, Hi, then, I'm new. Then, Have then, you met me? Then, then Kurt. Kurt, I'll, I'll I'll give you a hint then. Mike and I's favorite game. My, wait, Mike and I's favorite game. Um, we talked about it an awful lot. Destiny. Two. two. Oh, Destiny you got a hold two. of the list? What? You got a no, hold of the I, list? I, no, I don't have the list. I just, like I said, I know what these games are this, this month. Holy cow. Yeah, Destiny 2 is on the list. It crept back yes. up to the top ten. And guess what number it is, Kurt? Uh, eight. It's number eight. Yay! <laughs> really? yeah, he finally gets a number eight, and it doesn't count. <laughs> Kurt's finally winning, and it doesn't count. Um, I'll t- let me say this: half the games on the list are sports games. So Madden 19 okay. is number three. It's on the list, but it's not number three. Okay. Um, some sort of hockey game, and I want to say number five. Okay, NHL 19 is on the list. It's not number five. NBA 2K19 is number three. Close. It's number two. Okay. Oh. Um, is, it all, is it all the sports games? I think I might have one more. But... MLB The Show? Nope. One more okay. sports game. FIFA 19? Nope. Number oh, nine? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. FIFA 19 is not is on there, but it's not number nine. Sorry, there's one more sports game after that. Oh. What are the sports are there? I mentioned NHL? it earlier. I mentioned it Le- briefly Le- earlier. Le- Lee Carvello's putting challenge? Yep. <laughs> May I suggest putter? I um, just talked about uh, it earlier during our Xbox discussion. Oh, crap. I don't remember what you said. I, don't, I ignore you. If I, if I actually pay attention <laughs> to what Mike was you saying. actually pay attention to what Mike is saying. Wow, I learned a lot today. I learned a lot. Join us next week with all new co-hosts. <laughs> four, fours of... Fours of yeah, four. fours horizon, of four the horizon. The horizon. Yeah, I would, I would say probably. <laughs> but this, are, well, I guess that's a. Yeah. Like All right. Auto race. I guess Forza would be a sports game, but I would think that more of a racing game. No, well, racing is a sport. Racing. Yeah, it is. But I mean, like <laughs> when you look at scientists. when you look at like genres of you, games, it you, would go into walk, the racing you game. You walk five in, in Chicago. You know, racing's a sport. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
Is Cash wants to know is wrestling a sport? Yeah, wrestling absolutely is a sport. It's sports entertainment. <laughs> Uh, All right. I I thought it was just some guys rolling around in tight pants. No, you're thinking of the new Queen movie that's coming out. Oh, okay. Um. So anyway, <laughs> good night, everybody. Um. All right, let me go through the list. So number one, uh, Marvel Spider Man. I still had some more. Oh, you got another Black, guess? Okay, throw another guess Black, out there. Black, Black Ops Four is number two. No, it's not. Is it? I want to say Grand Theft no, Auto not Five is still up there because of the hype of. You know, horse face. Yeah, no, Grand Theft yeah, Auto, the Grand Theft Auto is knocked off the list. Wow! So yep. that's twice in two years. Yep. Nice. Twice in two years has been knocked off the list. All right. Any other guesses? So, guessing so, the guess so or Black two? Ops Four was not on the list. No. What about? It came um, out in October. This is for September. Oh, that came, okay. No, okay, you're right. You're right. Sorry about that. What about um? Assassin's Creed. Yep, it's on the list. Number five? Nope. Okay. Any more guesses? <laughs> no. no. Any more comments from the peanut gallery? All right, we're nope, good? Good. All right, sounds good. So number one was Spider-Man. Wait, I got one more. Oh, yeah, you, you take that comment and <laughs> you can stuff it okay, in the number, uh, number one Spider-Man. Number one Spider-Man. Number two, NBA 2K19. Number three, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Number four, FIFA 19. Number five, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, number six, Madden 19. Number seven, Forza Horizon 4. Number eight, Destiny 2. Number nine, Super Mario Party. Oh, wow. And mm. number 10, NHL 19. So a lot of surprises on this list for uh, September for NPD. A lot of games we weren't expecting. That's a crazy amount of sports games that are on that list. I know. Yep. It is, right? Like totes, right? Totes my goats. Yeah. It's all true. Uh, all right. Well, good. That's our NPD. So those are the top games. Join us next month when we tell you all the wonderful top, gen, top 10 games that came out for October. Any guesses as to what's number one? <laughs> uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay. I'm just guessing it right now. No, I'm not saying that's that's a good guess. I, I'm 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 gonna go I'm gonna go back to Grand Theft Auto. It's been good. Jumps back up to number one. <laughs> yeah. The original. Because <laughs> because they play it and they're like, man, I'm gonna go buy Grand Theft Auto again. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> oh well. That would be hilarious. All right, so that's our news for the week. Brian, what's yes, coming sir. out? What video games can we look to pick up this week? Well, we can look to pick up Mutant Football League, the Destiny Edition, for the PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. Eight to Glory, which is for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Call of Chukulu? I put I, I, I put the I put the phonetic in there. And I was close. Yeah. Cthulhu. 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 Isn't that a t- isn't There's going to be a Metallica lot song? of goth people that are angry with you right now. Isn't that uh, also a Metallica song? You can send all your angry letters to thecontrollerthors at gmail.com. Bring it. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I, I will also ask, though, isn't that a Metallica song? I don't know. the Lightning. Sure, why not? PS1, ask for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Uh, Harry Potter collection for the Xbox One and the Switch. Kingdom Hearts, the story so far for the PS4. Diablo 3, the Eternal Collection for the Switch. The Escape is 2 for the Switch. All right. Mm. Uh, so, let's see. Dude, Not gotta buy the Lego Harry Potter for the wife. She would, like, meh, freak out about that. Yeah. The original, just all seven games i think it was no i don't know if it's yeah. all seven games or not. either way but yeah the lego harry potter um diablo 3 i was considering but i'm not going to get it if i don't have anyone to play it with so but it, it got great reviews um it's getting really it's uh reviews are starting to hint, hit hint 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 yeah <laughs> uh what else mutant league or mutant football league uh i never played the original but i heard it's a lot of fun and i could always go for a a fun arcadey football game since they're not doing any more NFL blitz games. 
I don't know. That's all. That's all that looks interesting to me on here. How about the both of you? Anything look interesting? I've never played Kingdom Hearts, but I hear it's supposed to be a good game. Like, there's been people that are like, literally, like messing themselves over that game. So I don't. I don't know. I've never played it. Kingdom Hearts has a strong following, especially yeah. if you're a Disney person, because it's mm-hmm. basically like the Disney version of the Avengers. Where all you visit all these different Disney worlds with all the characters from all the Disney movies. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know, Brian. Yeah, no, no, nothing. I got no, nothing for me. Okay. <laughs> no. no, I'm done. No. I'm out. <laughs> no. Pass. No. Pass. I'm good. All right. Nothing. I waited. I waited a year for the game that came out last week. I'm. I'm good for a while, so. (laughs) All right, so those are the games that are coming out this week. So let us jump right into our retro spooktive, our last retro spooktive. So this is our part of the show where one of the controller throwers is assigned a retro game. Retro being that the game has to be 15 years old or older, and they need to research the game. Look up uh, amusing anecdotes. Tell us all about the development, the release, the reception, all that other good stuff. Uh, if you have an opportunity to play the game, play it. If not, then you fail. Uh, and then let us know what you think of the game. So, Kurt, your retro spooktive title for this last day of October, week of October, whatever, is <laughs> the original Resident Evil on the PlayStation 1. So, um, were you able to find any information whatsoever on this game? Was it kind of tough to find info? Re- really? Wait a second. You, you said Resident Evil? I thought we were doing Tomb Raider. <laughs> That's what you thought we were doing last week. Well, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so I did find some information. Some <laughs> information on Resident Evil. I should say this, um, though. I should interrupt you really quick and say sure. before we started the show, Kurt just looked at me. And he's like, you had to give me a game that printed out 12 pages worth of notes. No, 17. 17 pages yeah, worth he, of notes. He, he, he showed us a notebook. There you go. Yeah. See, look at that. 17 pages worth of notes on this game. And all of all this, too. <laughs> all right, Kurt. Uh, we'll be back in a you, couple hours. I'm not going to tell you all this stuff. We're going to do, like, the cliff of the cliff of the cliff notes for it because there's just so much information of it out there for it so if you guys want to dive in deeper to this game you probably already know the game obviously because i don't know if there's a single soul out there that has not either seen or played or heard of this game uh this game um being known in japan as biohazard um it's a media franchise owned by the japanese video game company capcom Uh, The franchise focuses on a series of survival horror games and incorporates live-action films, animations, comic books, novels, audio dramas, and merchandise. The following outtakes of the zombies and monsters were created mainly by Umbrella Corporation. The first Resident Evil was released in 1996, taking place in a mansion overrun with zombies. The franchise has grown to encompass numerous sequels in various genres. Uh, incorporating elements of action, exploration, puzzle solving, storylines inspired by horror and action films. Um, Resident Evil is Capcom's best selling game franchise with over 84 million games sold worldwide, which is an amazing feat, right? Half of those are Resident Evil 4 because they <laughs> kept re releasing it. Yeah, probably. There, there's a there's a huge release line of it. Um, 1996 Resident Evil, 1998 Resident Evil 2, 1999 Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Uh, 2000 actually had two of them, Resident Evil, Evil Survival, Resident Evil Code Veronica. 2001, again, two releases, Resident Evil uh, Gadian, Resident Evil Survival uh, 2, Code Veronica. In 2002, Resident Evil, the remake, Resident Evil Zero. 2003, Resident Evil Dead Aim, Resident Evil Outbreak. 2004 was Resident Evil Outbreak, file number two. 
Resident Evil 4 was in 2005, and then they skipped 2006 because in 2007 they came out with Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. Then, of course, they skipped another year, and in 2009 they released Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles, skipped 2010, and in 2011 Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D. So in 2012, Resident Evil, Evil uh, Revelations, Resident Evil uh, Operations Raccoon City, and Resident Evil 6. So three titles in 2012. It's like they're pushing them out. Uh, and then they took a break for two years and did Resident Evil Revelations 2 in 2015. 2016, Umbrella Corpse. 2017, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And then, of course... We're coming up to the next one. 2019, they're going to release Resident Evil 2, the remake. So a lot of Resident Evils. It is a lot of Resident Evil. I don't even know, what is that, 16, 20, 32? How many of that? I mean, that's a <laughs> lot of Resident Evils. So to go and do the backstory and all those would just be unbelievable. Um. The development of the first Resident Evil began in uh, 1993 when um, it was conceived as a remake of the earlier 1989 Capcom horror game, Sweet Home. In late 1994, marketing executives were setting up to bring the the game to the United States. It was pointed out that a DOS game has already been recently registered under that name. So a contest was held among the company personnel to choose a new name. Uh, This competition turned up Resident Evil, the name currently known in the West. Resident Evil made its debut on the PlayStation in 1996 and was later later ported to the Sega Saturn. The first entry in the series of of the first game ever to be dubbed a survival horror. A term coined for the game uh, initiated and its critical commercial success led to the production of two sequels, Resident Evil 2 in 1998 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis in 1999, both for the PlayStation. Uh, A port of Resident Evil 2 was released for the Nintendo 64. In addition, ports of all three were released for Microsoft Windows. The fourth game in the series, Resident Evil Code Veronica, was developed for the Dreamcast and released in 2000 following the ports of Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. Resident Evil Code Veronica was later released for the Dreamcast in Japan uh, in an updated Code Veronica Complete, which included slight changes, many of which have revolved around the story cutscenes. This updated version was later ported to the PlayStation 2 and GameCube under the code, uh, under the title Code Veronica X. So, yeah, it's that sheet. So, <laughs> so what does it say? What what does it tell us about the very first one? Um, so the main storyline of the games primarily concerns of a group of individuals who battled against the Umbrella Corporation, as well as characters in relation to them who have developed the T-virus, among other things, which can transform humans into zombies as well as mutant and other creatures into horrifying monsters. Um, The plot lines of the main uh, installments up to the third game uh, all concern the T-virus outbreak in the Arclay Mountains and a spread to a nearby Raccoon City. In 1996, Resident Evil for the PlayStation follows protagonist Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine, who became trapped in a mansion in the mountains trying to search for the survivors of the Bravo Bravo team of the Special Police Unit Stars. They discovered the mansion... Uh, conceals an Umbrella Corporation base where they develop the T-Virus, with their end goal being the creation of biohazard weapon as the tyrant for uh, for whom the virus is named. Uh, Playing as either of the characters, the player must navigate through the mansion 
Alternatively, with help of Barry Burton and Rebecca Chambers, uh, until they are betrayed by Albert, who was secretly planning to steal the T-Virus, though appearing to be killed by the tyrant, um, he survived and masterminded some later events behind the scenes. That's a lot of info. It was, it yeah. was, Resident Evil was such a fun game. It was the first game I ever played on the PlayStation. Like, mm. the and when I, I couldn't afford a PlayStation because I was a sophomore in high school. Um, and so we ended up renting it from Beggar's Video. Um, and I just, a few buddies of mine, and we all just had a sleepover and just, just played like Ridge Racer. And, but I was playing Resident Evil and man, that, that was like, like how Mario 64 was. It just, just blew you away when you played it. That's how Resident Evil was. And it, the game to me, cause I was so used, I grew up on these 2d side scrolling games, moving on to Resident Evil was a huge learning curve for me. It was so difficult. Like, I got killed by the birds um, as soon as I walked into the room with, with, with the birds there. Mm. And I didn't know how to aim. And, you know, it was just, it, it was uh, it was tough, very tough. But um, I gave it another tank chance. Tank mechanics. Tank, yep, tank controls. Uh, but when I actually got the game, or when I actually got my own PlayStation and I got Resident Evil, then I jumped into it. And I'm like, all right, now I'm getting a hold of this. But it was... Um, there's, I know Brian still, you still haven't played the original Resident Evil. So there's a scene in the first one, mm. not a scene, but there's a part in the first one when you say, "Oh, what was the scariest part of any video game?" Everybody will tell you that this part in Resident Evil was a was a major scare mm. for them. I'm not gonna say what happens in case Brian ever plays the game. <laughs> Have you ever played it, Kurt? No. The original? No. Okay. Uh, wait a second. I I have played it, but I haven't gotten too far. Okay. So I, I friend had it, played it a little bit. That's about it. Okay. Yeah, it was, um, man, it was, it was, it was such a, such a fun game. And it, it just got so popular. Resident Evil two, obviously that's what a lot of people loved, uh, more so than the original, but, uh, when they released the remake for the GameCube, which was the base game for all the other Resident Evil 1 remakes that you'll see on the PS4 and the Xbox One and PC, all that other stuff. Uh, that was an amazing game, too. Um, and the, the stories contrast differently, whether you're playing as Chris or Jill. It's like totally different endings, different paths, uh, different boss battles, things like that. So mm. it was a surprisingly very deep game, especially coming out so early on the PlayStation. So, Excellent. Yeah. Any other interesting factoids? Um, you got, you've got about another 38 pages to sift through. I, I do. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff. What do, what do you want to know? How did it sell? Um, what did, oh, you said it sold over 84 million copies. Yeah, 84 million copies. Um, as far as the scores, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Resident <laughs> Evil... Uh, the game ranks was 87% as far as the re- uh, the the uh, the rankings on that one. Resident Evil Remake was 90%, and it just climbs from there. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think their highest ranking was Resident Evil 4, obviously, for 96% hmm. was the rankings on that. So, I mean, that's just huge. Yeah. yeah. So they uh, definitely had some awesome stuff. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much, Kurt. Um so Brian, you're next. Uh, we, you're gonna spin the wheel, uh, and we took. It's no longer retrospective. It's back to our retrospective. So you're gonna go ahead and <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and spin the wheel. How many clicks do you want to spin it well, between one and ten? Thirty-seven. <sighs> I'll give you two. Seven. Okay. So here we go. Let's find out what game Brian gets to. Tell us all about next week. So, Brian. Oh! Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero. One of the worst games ever made. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I am not joking. <laughs> uh, so never who picked played that one? a Mortal Kombat who game. Who picked that one? Because it wasn't me. I picked it. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Mortal Kombat Mythology, Sub Zero. Oh, Ooh. man. Are you going to have fun with that? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Hashtag blame Mike. Yep. So that's still, you know, it's still, you'll have fun with it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Vash you doesn't. You see the enthusiasm in his face. Yeah, like... you see the enthusiasm. He's probably, are you looking it up right now just to see? <laughs> that's all right. So, yeah, Vash. Yeah, doesn't... I actually, I, I am kind of. You looking it up, looking up some info yeah. on it? All right. Yeah. Yeah, Vash says there, you fight a giant snake for some reason. Yeah, there is a giant snake in Resident Evil, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's just it's just there. It's Every everything's giant. So anyway, um, all right. So that's our retrospective. So let us get into what we've been playing. Uh, who would like to go first? I'll go first. All right. So uh, so I played I played some more uh, Rocket League. Uh, oh, wow. still, still continuing. It's been a while since you played that, huh? Yeah, well, I've been playing a lot lately because of the Halloween um, events where I could try to get all sorts of Halloween gear for my remote-controlled RC Pro-Am car. So I've been uh, I've been playing a lot of that. Um, I've also... So I, I just... Actually, it was just, just two games that I played. So I played... Um, I played uh, uh, Rocket League. I also took advantage of the Target um, buy two get one free deal. So I haven't played these yet, but I did pick up um, the Sega Genesis Collection and NHL 18 Ooh. for the PlayStation 4. So I figured if I I'll get the Sega Genesis Collection because then I'll be able to stream a lot of the st- retro stuff. Nice. So and then the cool thing is when I when I got the Sega Genesis Collection, when I opened up the box, it came with this little mini poster. That has Golden Axe on one side, and on the That's other awesome. side, Streets of Rage. Nice. So I'm totally going to hang that up in my locker between third and fourth period. Um, <laughs> That's hilarious. So uh, the other game I played was a little game that released last Friday. You may not have heard of it. It's a game called Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, Never heard of it. Yeah. So that's a game where you play a cowboy, and on a steel horse you ride. Um yeah, I know, that's bad. Uh, well, see, that's like what you said, howdy, y'all. I figured that's oh, why. Oh, that's where you thought. See, I, I wasn't smart enough for that Redemption thing. and yeah, things. Yeah, no, I get it now. I get it now. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I actually get it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I, I played Red Dead Redemption 2, and that game was, it's a good game. I'm not 100% convinced that it's this amazing game that it was set out to be. And I know I'm going to be in the minority here, and a lot of people are going to be like, rah, 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 what are you talking about? It's the greatest game ever. Rah, rah, rah. We work for IGN. Um, no. We work for IGN. So why are you not totally in love with this game? So, there is, so the first thing is there is so much micromanagement in this game like one of the things i feel is like do they re- do you really have to shave is shaving really necessary is cutting your hair really necessary is taking a bath really necessary is is brushing your horse really necessary there's so many little things in the game that if you don't do like if you eat too much your stamina goes down but if you don't eat enough your stamina goes down or it's like, I just want to like run around and shoot bad guys and rob banks and do the, uh, do the missions. I don't want to have to worry. Oh man, I didn't have my, you know, my oatmeal this morning, you know, and I, I didn't, I I didn't drink my Mountain Dew. Uh, (laughs) Oh wait, they didn't have Mountain Dew back then. Okay. My bad. Um, so that, that to me was kind of a turnoff. Like, I just just want to get in there. I just want to play a game. I just want to play the game. I don't want to have to worry about all these these other things. The other thing that really aggravates me about this game is the the logic. So, and this has happened to me on more than one occasion. So it wasn't just a goof. Uh, for example, 
riding my horse, you know, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, enjoying the scenery, beautiful out, nice sunsets. I see down the road, there's a, a wagon broken down and a guy that had just killed a woman. So she's laying there dead. So I go up and I talk to him and I say, you know, I, I press the button to call, you know, to call out to him. And he's like, you better stay away from me. So then it gives me an option to call out, which means like call him out for what he just did. Like, Hey, I just saw you do that. So I say something to the guy. He pulls out a gun, shoots me twice. I shoot him and kill him. And then I get a bounty on my head for murder. I'm like, this dude just shot me twice and I killed him. Now I'm wanted for murder. I'm like, what, where am I, Texas? You know, it's just, it, and then, um, another, another example I ran into two. So when, when you play the game, you, um, there's a rival gang called the O'Donnellys or something like that, or the O'Donnells or something like that. The, the Terry O'Donnell. O'Doyles. O'Doyles. Um, something like that. And O'Doyles. 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 O'Doyles rules. O'Doyle. O'Doyle rule. <laughs> so, um, actually, it's actually the O'Driscolls, but the O'Driscolls. I, 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 I have yeah. end up calling them O'Doyles, and yeah. every time I do see them, I do shout out O'Doyle rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, I will make that the name of the episode: O'Doyle rules. <laughs> O'Doyle rules. Um, so I. Ran oh, and the... by the way, not, not, I'm going to pause you for a second. Okay. The reason why you hate the micromanagement is because you really hate simulator games. I don't mind simulator games. I just don't like having to figure every little tiny little detail in order to to make myself. Uh, but it's it's Red Dead Redemption plus Red Dead Redemption Simulator. It is. It is. Yeah. It's horse face and, simulator. And, and it's 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 literally trying to be as realistic as possible. Yeah. You don't. And, have and to be honest with you, no, you don't have to shave. That's not part of the. That's not really necessarily part of of that doesn't really affect anything. But it said but it like would cold. affect. It said it would affect the way people look at you if you're not clean shaven. That people will look at you as, as a bad person. They, yeah, they may look at you differently, but it's not. And now, and now like showering. I mean, what if what if you don't shower for a week? How are people people at work going to look at you? But you know that's why it's a video game. That's why it's a video game. That's why it's not real but, life. I get enough of I get enough crap at work for not showering. All right, I don't need it in my video games too. <laughs> so, anyways, another situation. Uh, I came across the O'Doyle boys. Two of them were robbing some guy, and I ran up and I stopped the robbery and I punched both of the O'Doyle, O'Doyle boys and I knocked them both out. And then I looted them. So the guy, the guy's like, "Oh, thank you so much. Let me give you this pocket watch as as a way to say thanks." And then the guy runs off. So then I loot the two guys that I just knocked out. Um, no problem. And then I accidentally press the button and and I go to pick I pick one of them up and then boom, I have another bounty on my hands just because I lifted <laughs> a guy onto my shoulder. Like they, I don't know, it's just so that that's that's what that's why I'm kind of aggravated about the game. Now uh there are some fun parts. I'm not going to lie. Like there's a lot of good parts of the game. I'm not saying that the game is bad. Like for example, I was riding down the riding down the road and there was a guy that was trying to shoe a horse and he's like I, I call out to him. I'm like, "Hey, you need some help?" <laughs> I I saw this part too. You got to this guy too. And he's like, "Yeah, I could use some help." And he look he turns and he looks over. He's like, "Thanks a lot, friend." And then all of a sudden the horse kicks him right in the face and kills him <laughs> and runs off. I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess, <laughs> yeah. So Vash says, I feel restrained by the gang. I want to do my own thing. Um, yeah, and, and that's another one. They have some good forensics around them parts. A bounty on your head with no witnesses. Yeah, that's right. Like, if you're going for realistic, that part is so unrealistic that, I don't know. I'm going to okay, play the okay, game a but, lot but more. We, we've talked about this for 100 years, my video game logic. Yeah. Well, you there's, know, there's there there's no rhyme or reason to to why I can't drive an SUV through a fence, but I can drive it through 37 cars. Right. Right. You know, there's no there's no there's no logic as to why you have a bounty on your head because you pick somebody up. It's just it's just a game. Right. But still, it's if the game is supposed to be hyper realistic, 
something like that to me is it really takes you out of the enjoyment. Well, you have to shave and shower so you don't stink and you look good. So, I mean, you got to take the good with the bad, right? Well, yeah, but I, I'd, I'd rather take no shaving and being able to, you know, kill somebody with no witnesses and not be wanted. Not in real life, in the game. We're talking about the game. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you because they've, they've postponed this for so yeah. long that it's one of those deals where it's like you think with you postponing it this long – you would have said, hey, let's put the shaving on the back burner and the showering on the back burner, and let's make sure that the interactions between the people, the NPCs in the game, are actual true interactions instead of, like, yeah. this thing where it's like, oh, we interact, and, uh, well, this outcome happens, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. They what? should have they should have fine-tuned that more than they should have fine-tuned the shaving and, and the haircuts and the and – the, de-stinking yourself and everything else. I right. agree with you with that part. Um, but at the same time, they're trying to, to get you into the game by simulating you as a real human in the game. Yeah. So I understand that. So, I understand that. And, I'm and, and, and I, will, I will say this. I'm like, I don't know how long you've played the game, but I played roughly 10 hours. And when I first, you know, when, when the whole like opening part is done and you actually start to like, you're able to explore on your own. And, yeah. You know, your character has a full beard. I, I went clean shaven and I still haven't shaved yet. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, it's not like it's some, something you do all the time. Right. And, and the taking a bath in the game literally takes about a minute out of your time. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I mean, it's, 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 it's the micromanagement. Yes. But at the same time, it's, it's, it doesn't take, it's not, something that takes forever for you to do right but at the same time to coin a brian phrase um <laughs> i'm i also have to take care of my camp like i'm always i always have to bring stuff back donate stuff to the camp give money to the camp you know what else you know i, I, I don't know i'm not gonna now, get into this because i've I, ranted I, I, will, I, I will i will i will add to that, that 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 is one of the frustration frustrating parts about the game for me is you know, that's the only game I played over the weekend. So that's that's. I mean, I, I've I know everything that Mike's talking about because I've I've done the same things, but it doesn't bother me because I've always appreciated the micromanagement of of many games. Right. Um. You know, again, the shaving the shaving part. Again, I shaved once in the ten hours I played. You can. I actually, I, I take that back. I I shaved twice because I actually had the full thick mustache going at first. And then I just cut that off. That's that's the only the only difference I did. Do you have the handlebars or anything? No, it it, it like literally went like down like half half down my mouth. It, it was all oh, like the go to go to type like kind of mustache kind of. thing. So and, kind of. and here's the thing is that the game itself. I'm not saying the game is bad because the storyline, the voice acting, everything like that is absolutely incredible, and I know I'm going to enjoy it. I'm just saying that I would enjoy it more if there wasn't all this pointless busy work. I'm going to go play gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's what I played. Brian, did you, was there anything else you wanted? Any funny, uh, funny transactions that happened with you? Well, I will say kind of, kind of to your whole, your whole, um, bounty thing. You know, I fortunately have only had one bounty on my head, but I have not been able to get rid of it since, since I, I first started. So you first start, you know, you go through you go through the whole introduction, the whole like kind of tutorial chapter, and then you start actual your actual gameplay. So I made I made it to the first village, and the first thing you do, you know, you, you go into every town, you talk to as many people, you find out what everything does. Still trying to get used to the used to the to the buttons. I walk into a bank, I go up to the teller. Yeah. And instead, well, here here's the thing though, this is all my fault. Instead of hitting the conversation button, the left trigger. I or the the left trigger, I hit the right trigger and I shoot the guy. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. So I, I legitimately walk into a bank and shoot <laughs> the guy point blank. So <laughs> there's no one's fault but mine only because I hit the wrong button. Right. And then and then what happens? The armed security guard in the bank, he starts shooting at me, so I shoot him. <laughs> so you got to. right then and there I have a sixty dollar bounty on my head. Mike, you know how, how difficult it is to, to get money in that game. Yep. So 
the only other thing that that I've I've had so far is is I can't get this bounty off my head because then I, I had trying to get out of town. You know, I ended up get I ended up dying because I couldn't just kill all everyone that was shooting at me. And then a a posse came after me and I killed a couple of them. So so my bounty went up to one hundred and five dollars. So I've literally been spending ten hours trying to get one hundred and five dollars. I'm up to like one hundred and one. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's ridiculous because because yeah. like like when you you loot a body and you get like thirty seven cents. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, Ugh. so I've 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 tried I've tried a lot of the hunting. The hunting is actually very very fun in the game. I like the hunting. I'll I'll say that. Yeah. Um, and 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 in that in that aspect, it, it does become very realistic in in the sense that, you know, you can't go up to a buffalo and shoot him with an arrow and expect to kill him. You know, or if you get too close, or if you start making too much noise, they run. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, in that sense, the you know, the, the realist, the the realism of the game is is I think is phenomenal. The buffalo actually pull out a gun and start shooting at you too. So <laughs> nice, that's realistic. Yeah. Yeah. I I actually I shot a deer. So I was hunting last night and I shot a deer with an arrow, and I'm like, and it was, I know it was a good hit, and I got it from far away. I'm like, awesome. And the deer started running, and I'm like, oh, man. I said, it's not dead yet, but it ran for about 20 feet and then fell over. I'm like, and it didn't get up. I'm like, wow, that's like, that's like, I was not mm-hmm. expecting that. I'm like, that's really cool. So then I went over and finished it off, and now I have delicious deer burgers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I but I, I've also I've also appreciated micromanagement games for a while. So yeah, that's different. You you and yeah, you're you're a fan of those. To me, like those. to me, I I I love the realism of hey, you eat too much, you get fat, you can't run. Okay. I mean, you you, you wear a winter coat in in in, in, in the desert, you're not going to be your 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 condition is not going to be that great. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, I I truly truly appreciate that. The thing that 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 does get me a lot though is like when you get off your horse and you have to like like take your weapons like you have to go go into your horse baggage and then take your weapons like half the time I'm like I get off my horse and I start running oh wait a minute I don't have my bow and arrow or I don't have my rifle so I got to run back yeah. and get it and then go out. My biggest pet peeve with the game and I'm surprised you didn't mention this is how many hats have you had to buy? Oh oh no! <laughs> I, think... I lose my hat. Yeah. Every single time I do something. Yep, I lose my hat every single time. Actually, I didn't have a hat for the longest time. Luckily, the guy that got kicked in the face by the horse, I just walked up to him and I took his hat and walked off. <laughs> like, you all right, buddy? So, well, you're not going to be needing this. <laughs> New hat. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, and, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm still learning the, 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 the mechanics of the game because it's just there's just so, so much to do. But I think your hats stay with you. So if you go into your inventory, I think you still have the hat you lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because somehow I, I only bought one hat, but I somehow I have like five in my inventory. Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, you, you go without one for a while, but at the same time, it's just like, you know, you're a cowboy and you're like, I don't have my hat. It just this doesn't seem it's, it's this isn't right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not a cowboy without my hat. <laughs> uh, Vash, see, anyone's find a half torso hang? Yes, I found that last night, and I was wondering what it was, but I didn't see the sign. So I'm a, I have a feeling that's gonna trigger some kind of a, some kind of a mission or something later on in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did see the half torso. That was, that was pretty jacked up. So, yeah, so, but you would agree with me, Brian, that it's a great game, but there are some things that are a little bit annoying about it, and maybe that's just because we're so new at it, and once we get used to it, we'll say, feel look, better. Give, give it time. Give it yeah. time. I, I will say I do have one last one, two, two funny anecdotes, anecdotes about the game. I'll be quiet. So try when, when you have a bounty, you go back into town and people treat you very differently. But if you keep saying hello to everybody, it start act, you start actually becoming liked again. And Mike, I, I think we were talking and, and how I was like hoping that, that, that he, he would like walk up and greet a lady and just go, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So I actually walked up and, and said hello to to a lady, and he goes, "Howdy, ma'am." I was like, <laughs> "There we good go." Good enough. <laughs> I was like, "Close enough." Awesome. And then the only other uh, other funny story that I have, and and it, it was just it, it cracked me up because of of how it happened. 
So I'm I'm riding down a trail and I'm galloping at a pretty good speed. I, I look over to somebody who's who's coming the opposite way in a in a, a horse and carriage and I go and I, I greet him. I say hello because I'm trying to get my bounty down so I don't get bounty hunters after me every five seconds. Yeah. And my my character calls out, "Howdy, Mister!" And I turn out and I, I turn I look back and bam, I run right into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> the horse falls down. I go flying. And I'm thinking, oh, great, I just killed my horse. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was just, I mean, I, I look away, how do you miss her? And I turn and boom, here's this tree. That's awesome. That was kind of like, yes, uh, when I when I was streaming it, uh, and uh, I was, there was a witness, of course, the witness to me killing somebody that I was just defending myself. And he starts riding away on his horse. And I, and I go to try to cut him off, and our horses collide, and the horses go flying and flip over. The guy gets launched off the horse and dies. <laughs> it was just so funny. If you if you check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tcthrowers, uh, go to our clips. You'll find the clip of the uh, of the two, of the horse collision that uh, that, that was pretty brutal. Uh, the you'll horse also, collision was amazing. You'll also find a clip of uh, one, one of my horses pooping, so <laughs> which was a lot of fun. <laughs> Again, hyper realism. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, o- overall, I'm, I'm, I, it, there's a lot to get used to. There's a lot of micromanagement, but I'm truly enjoying it, and I, I can't wait to get more into it so I can become a better hunter. I can, you know, get, upgrade the weapons. I actually read online that there's UFOs you can find in the game. Oh, really? Yes. Really. Sweet. All right. So I mean, I, I just, I, I'm looking forward to just playing more. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Kurt, how about you? What did you play? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, Brian played one game. You played two games. I played maybe three. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, we got that going for us. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was the one who played the most games. I don't know if you want to say played necessarily. Um, so... I did Grand Theft Auto 4. Um, I kind of tried to do Grand Theft Auto 3, but Grand Theft Auto 3 didn't really work that much. I have to, I guess I have to install some sort of mod or something Mm -hmm. that makes it work for the PC. Um, So I start off with Grand Theft Auto 4. I'm going through the whole story mode of that. Um, I streamed a little bit of that, me kind of messing around and doing stuff. Um, played a little bit of Minecraft, not a lot, not a lot. Um, I made a path. That was about it. Um, <laughs> I installed Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, that took so a lot that, of So that took up probably about like, uh, hour and a half of my life. So I didn't, I didn't get to play it, but I installed it. Um, so I do, I do have it. Um, it's here. Ready for multiplayer mode. Um, so you people that are talking about what you've encountered during gameplay, I'm waiting. I'm going to do it the opposite way. I'm going to wait until multiplayer comes out. I'm going to kick ass and chew bubblegum. Chew <laughs> my... tobacco. Yeah, right. With, tobacco. With, my, with my broskies. <laughs> yep. And then um, once I had enough fun play time with that, then I'll probably go through the story mode. So I'm going to do like the opposite that everybody else is doing, right? Sounds good. Everybody else has the game and they're like, oh, I'm going to play the hell out of this and everything else. No, no, I'm just going to sit back, relax. I'm going to do the multiplayer. And then when all the hype is down, I'm going to go through the story mode and, and, and kind of experience it on my own with my own thing because I've, I'm hearing so many things. I'm trying to block it out. There's so many people streaming it right now because, well, that's what streamers do, right? They get a game and they stream it right away to get those viewers and get the view count and everything else, and I don't care. I just I want to play it and experience the game on my own. Uh, so I've been trying to avoid, except for, of course, supporting my buddy Mike over here. I'll watch Yay. him play it because – Mainly because it's funny when uh, the horse poops himself or he has horse, horse collisions or something like that. It I, I get a chuckle out of it, and that's why I watch him. Um, so, yeah, so I installed it, didn't play it. It's it's sitting there chilling, waiting for me to, to fire it up. 
Um, I played a little bit of Forza, uh, or Fortza, as some other people in the chat might might want me to call it. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm still calling it Forza. I don't care what anybody says. Um, I uh, I played a little bit of that. I streamed a little bit of it. Um, I actually just recently got a streaming PC, so now I have a dedicated casting PC, which actually just does nothing but encoding and sends it out to the internet, and I have my tower for my gaming, and I have my consoles, so I have it set up to where now all that that computer does stream, and everything else gameplay-wise is separate from that, so um, I've been doing test streams periodically just to see video quality, how much it can handle. Right now I'm doing um, 30 frames a second at 1080. Um, So it's holding really good right now. So I'm just trying to see where that threshold is. Of course, some people using their mobile devices and stuff like that won't be able to watch it. So um, I'm going to have to try to dial it back or something because I think some people won't be able to watch my streams if I if I stream at 1080 30 or 1080 60. So I've been poking that around. Um, and then I think that was it. I mean, I don't know what else I played. All I saw you play was GTA 4. So Yeah, GTA 4, the Forza. Forza. <laughs> um, I installed Red Dead. I played Minecraft. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I installed the, I installed a bunch of games, but I didn't really play. Any. Oh wait, no, I played uh, um, Planet Coaster for a little bit. Oh okay. So I did do that a little bit. So a couple more games. Nice. All right, thank you. All right, so that just about does it for this week's uh, episode of the Controller Throwers podcast. Thanks everybody so much for hanging out with us in the chat. Um, now, just to let you know, we are on the social medias. You can find us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash tcthrowers. You can also find us on Twitter. We are at tcthrowers. That's at T as in Tom, C as in Charlie, throwers as in throwing things. You can also send us an email, thecontrollerthrowers at gmail.com. And you can find the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and with our new partner uh, in crime, the Gamerheads Podcast mm. Network. You can find us on uh, GamerHeadsPodcast.Podbean.com. You'll not only be able to find the Controller Thor's podcast, but you can also find uh, GamerHeads Podcast as well. So all of your gaming podcasty goodness all in one place. So, um, and if you want to watch the show, be sure to uh, show up every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Central Standard Time, where we uh, broadcast the podcast live. Be sure to check us out while we stream. Be sure to check Kurt out while he streams uh, once he gets everything set up. And uh, that's it. Is there anything I'm missing? That's all I got, right? Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, I think so. Okay, sounds good. All right, so good. So (laughs) uh, for (laughs) Brian and for Kurt, this is Mike saying, until next time, have some fun, play some games. We'll see you all next Tuesday. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you later. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Bye! If you like video games, debates, and silly banter, you'll love Gamerhead's podcast. Outside of your store, because I do feel like your store knows its identity. I do. I think that you guys know what Um, you are. No? Not always. Really? He sells fidget spinners. Well, not anymore. I mean, for a yeah, while. Not I mean, anymore. Not, not You're anymore. experimenting not, with not our... anymore. That's what I'm saying, though. You were just experimenting. <laughs> Golf was made by a Japanese guy. Yeah. Yeah. Go Iwata. Yeah. Big oh, image. the game. Yeah, not the okay. sport. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. like, huh. Well, speaking of Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Gamerheads on Podbean at gamerheadspodcast.podbean.com. What's up, everybody? I'm Tyler. I'm Lucas. And I'm Chris. And we're better than static. We meet up once a week and talk about movies, comics, and video games. I don't, I don't want to talk about that. What? Why? Why are you complaining about all the topics I bring up? I'm trying to sound professional, Chris. But we're not that good. We, we are too good. We make.
might not be great, but we are better than static. You guys can hit up iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, and YouTube to check us out. Hey, 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 it's Carrington from Real Dudes Podcast, and with me I have some fantastic co-hosts. Guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? This is Andrew, coming to you from Lynchburg, Ohio. This is Cody, coming from you also from Ohio. And this is Kyle, coming to you straight from the armpits of West Virginia. We are an indie gaming podcast. We all share a love for games, um, and you can check out our show on Podbean. Uh, just search for Real Dudes Podcast. You can also find us on iTunes, uh, Google Play, um, it, really any of the podcasting outlets that you like to use. Again, that is Real Dudes Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, if you love video games, you will love our show. Have you ever been reading through a stack of comics and thought, hey, maybe I should see what the Sarkham Asylum game is all about? Or been playing Marvel vs. Capcom and felt like you were at a real disadvantage because you didn't know who half the characters were? Well, Play Comics is the show for you. I'm Chris, and each episode, I take a look at video games based on comic book properties and how well they stick to that source material. So, whether you know the comics and want to actually learn how these games work, or know the games and want to know what the hell is going on, Go check out Play Comics at playcomics.com, the Brain Trust Bros Network, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts.